Skuktash, Sopam Tekumanyai. My name is Susanna Osif, and I proudly represent the Gila River Indian community, home to the Akimaratam people and the Peeposh. I serve as Miss Hill River, and it's such an honor to be here to witness history with every single one of you. As we all know, I have learned through my ambassador roles how much representation matters. For too long, Native Americans have been underrepresented. But today, we are so pleased to have with us Peggy Flanagan, the first Native Lieutenant Governor in the United States. It is my distinct honor to introduce Deb Holland of the Secretary of, U in of the Interior, Madam Secretary, our Auntie Deb. <laughs> Secretary Holland's appointment as the first Native Secretary in the history of the United States is a shining example of representation at the highest levels of our government. That brings a sense of hope, a sense of pride, and guidance. Not only is Secretary Holland the first Native American of the interior, but she is the first Native cabinet member and as I've said, representation matters because we are breaking barriers. We are setting a path for future generations, for our people to succeed. And it's so much easier to be able to have that guidance to ensure that we are standing up for our people, our voices are being heard, and our communities are being represented. So it is with pride that I introduce you the Secretary of the Interior, Secretary Deb Holland. Thank you. Thank you. I love you too. Thank you. Wow. That was awesome. Thank you, Susanna, so much. There's no question that your voice is out there and representation truly does matter. Guatsi haupa duhiname etzatuitsa shuimi hanu. Ziatimai shuimi hanu. Good morning, relatives and friends. It's such an honor to be here today. Uh, to join all of you on this important day. Uh, Governor Lewis, thank you so much for your amazing and wonderful hospitality. I'm so happy to be back at the Gila River Indian community. Today, we welcome President Joe Biden to the ancestral homelands of the Pima and Maricopa peoples. Every day, but particularly today, I think of the ancestors. We are here because they persevered. Their stories, our stories, are everywhere, in the air we breathe and the land we walk on. We tell those stories because Native American history is American history. President Biden has been a champion for Indian country, committed to doing what is right for our people. It is the honor of my lifetime to serve a president and an administration that truly sees indigenous people and has worked tirelessly to address the issues in Indian country that have long been underfunded and outright ignored. From infrastructure to education to the crisis of missing and murdered indigenous peoples, Joe Biden has directed historic resources into the hands of tribal leaders who know best how to strengthen their communities. For much of this country, boarding schools are places where affluent families send their children for an exclusive education. 
For indigenous peoples, they served as places of trauma and terror for more than 100 years. Tens of thousands of indigenous children as young as four years old were taken from their families and communities and forced into boarding schools run by the US government and religious institutions. These federal Indian boarding schools have impacted every indigenous person I know. Some are survivors, some are descendants, but we all carry the trauma that these policies and these places inflicted. This is the first time in history that a United States cabinet secretary has shared the traumas of our past. And I acknowledge that this trauma was perpetrated by the agency that I now lead. For decades, this terrible chapter was hidden from our history books. But now, our administration's work will ensure that no one will ever forget. Over the past three years, Interior's Federal Indian Boarding School Initiative has shed light on this horrific era of our nation's history, a federal agenda to assimilate and eradicate Native peoples. My maternal grandparents were only eight years old when they were stolen from their communities and forced to live in a Catholic boarding school until the age of 13. My great-grandfather was also taken, sent by train thousands of miles away from our small village of Mesita. Many children like them never went back home, and I mourn their passing alongside you. Others, like my grandparents, did return home, and I stand on their shoulders today. As part of the boarding school initiative, we published an investigative report that found loud and unequivocal truth that the federal government took deliberate and strategic actions through boarding school policies to isolate children from their families and steal from them the languages, cultures, and traditions that are foundational to Native people. But as we stand here together, my friends and relatives, we know that the federal government failed. It failed to annihilate our languages, our traditions, our life ways. It failed to destroy us because we persevered. <laughs> the investigative report calls on the federal government and Congress to take concerted actions to continue the work of healing from our shared past. And already, we're putting some of those recommendations into action. Through our interagency effort alongside the Departments of Education and Health and Human Services, we are investing in the preservation of native languages. We are developing a 10-year national plan guided by tribal leaders and native language teachers, which will be released soon. The painful loss of our indigenous languages has been a consistent topic as we have met with survivors across our nation, from Hawaii to Michigan to right here in Arizona. We are also continuing to ensure that our stories are told so that future generations will understand the impacts and intergenerational trauma caused by the boarding school policies. Assistant Secretary Brian Newland and I spent more than a year on what we called the road to healing. 12 visits to indigenous communities, including Gila River, that allowed survivors and descendants to share their boarding school experiences and the aftermath those schools left behind. In collaboration with the National Native American Boarding School Healing Coalition and with support from the National Endowment for the Humanities and the Mellon Foundation, we are creating an oral collection of first-person narratives from boarding school survivors. We are finalizing agreements between the department, the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History, and the Library of Congress to explore 
how those oral histories can best become part of upcoming and far-reaching educational resources, such as online, traveling, and long-term exhibitions that will share the history and legacy of the Federal Indian Boarding School system with the world. So many of you have been crucial to this process. That includes the Interior Department staff, many of them indigenous and here today, who worked through their own trauma to support this initiative. And I am incredibly grateful to my staff for everything they have done from the time this administration started. Today's event would not have happened without each and every one of you, without those who have spoken up, who have shared their pain, and who have been vocal in the face of injustice. Together, we have persevered. It means everything to be with you today and with our courageous president, who recognizes the impact these policies have had on each of us. Today is a day for remembering, but it's also a day to celebrate our perseverance. In spite of everything that has happened, we are still here. We are here healing our souls and carrying the strength of those who came before us. We are still here in prayer and ceremony, and we are still here doing our best to speak our languages, even if our parents were afraid to teach us, because that's how we honor those who sacrificed so that we could all be here today. Indigenous peoples have always been here, and today we commit to our shared future. Thank you, Mr. President, for bringing us together. Thank you all so much. Thank you.